Drop the gun. You are under arrest. Welcome back to Starkey Formstead, everyone. I wanted to make this video to bring awareness to you of a very important fact. My name is Samantha. And unfortunately, in my past, which I have one, I made some mistakes and had to stand before a judge. Thank you, God, I had a human deciding what would happen to me. Based on my history, education, family status, all of that good stuff, right? Using, hopefully on my part, discernment from God. Folks, are you aware that right now, across the United States, 20 different states are using AI and chat GBT to decide recidivism rates of criminals, to decide if there's enough evidence to go forward with a prosecution. Yes, you heard me, evidence. Point in case, there was a trial going on where AI scoured the internet, social media, other open sources of information that you have floating out there, looking for evidence that this person committed a crime. Now, the interesting thing is, is that during the trial, when the defense came up and said, well, can you show us where the evidence was found? AI and the open source company doing it had not kept that information and could not point out where it was located. So in other words, it's just testimony. So folks, they're also finding, and I found some great articles, that's how I know all this, starting in 2016, that it is more likely that black people, when they use these AI and chat GBT and open sources to help judges come up with how long someone's to get in jail, that black people are more likely to be prosecuted for a longer period of time. They've also found discrepancies, folks, in these programs saying that, okay, here's a white woman that committed petty theft. Here's a black woman that committed petty theft based on the white woman's history, based on the black woman's history, we're going to give the black woman longer time. Now we've had to deal with, with that in America just based off judges themselves, but now we have computer programs that will do it. And we all know that the majority of people just seem to believe anything that pops up on their phone. If you Google something and it pops up and it says fact check, 75% of people are gonna just naturally believe that. They take that as a source of truth. Never considering that the same way that your bank card can be hacked, these programs can be hacked, they can be, have code in them that naturally give them a bias against a certain person. Now I use color because everybody loves to use color, but let's talk about something a little more sinister. What if they base it on your religion? What if they say that more Christians are likely to push back against the government when they try to have shutdowns? And then we have another January 6th and we all go before the judge and he uses programming that says that we are more likely to recidivate, to do it again. And he gives Christians a longer sentence based on that versus atheist. Now, whether or not you agree with anything that I've said, I know you are a sound mind if you've made it this far in this video, you will agree with this statement. Isn't that wrong? Let me, let me give you guys a deeper thing to think about. What happens when they start using this in the medical field, which they already are, but on a daily basis? You go into the doctor, you get diagnosed with a rare cancer. Here is a case that I will share with you. My father was diagnosed with an extremely rare type of pancreatic cancer. The surgery needed to cure him of this cancer was called a Whipple. Now a Whipple cuts you from sternum to crotch at a diagonal 
opens you up and begins to remove intestine, stomach, gallbladder, bile duct, part of your liver, part of your pancreas. Guys, it is listed as the most painful surgery that you can have. My father was older than 63 at the time. The doctor, this was 20 years ago, sat around a table and fought for my dad's right to have the surgery because 33% of people died on the table during the Whipple. And those were young people. Only one person, even close to his age, had ever had to have this, the surgery and they, they perished on the table. So of course, the majority of doctors looking at case studies went, mm, no, this would be cruel to do this to this man. But his personal doctor said, listen to me. This man has no health issues. He just retired from ironworking last year. He's got a big family. He's strong-minded. He can do this. My father is now 83 because that doctor fought for him. But what about an AI that would have pulled all my dad's background up and would have said, he's been exposed to toxic chemicals, you know, working in plants, chemical plants, all of his life since he was 16. He smoked until he was 45. Um, he does not exercise. You know, he's older than 60. The survival rate on this cancer is already only 6%, which my dad, all glory to God, raised it worldwide to 7%. My dad's a one percenter. He's a one percenter. An AI would have doomed my father to death because nothing made sense with him surviving but God. So there's my thought process for you. When we start allowing AI to decide rates for your insurance, how many years you're going to get in prison, and whether or not you're gonna get medical care, and we take the human side out of it, folks, we remove God, we are now working on an antichrist system. Yesterday, I brought a video to you talking about AI being the end time army found and located in the book of Joel. Folks, I advise you to go look at that. Please hit the like button, subscribe, drop a comment, row in our boat. If you'd like to subscribe to this channel and help us, we're going back to Maui. I'll drop ways that you can send money for that. Go check out our videos we've been doing about it. We'll be there August 1st through the 11th, passing out money to the fire victims. God bless you. All my kids are home. First time in 15 years, I had three of my four kids spend the night. So mom's got to go cook breakfast. God bless you guys.